So there's there's a quote um, that I read recently. It's uh, it's attributed to F.M. Alexander, and it basically says uh, people don't decide their futures; uh, they decide their habits, and their habits decide their futures. Right. First, you create your habits, and then your habits create you. And we did a whole chapter in Limitless on how to create and also break habits. Now, it's so important because you know, depending on what university so you look at, a lot of our behaviors every single day are unconscious. Right? They're habitual, um, and so the goal here is when you have a goal, maybe we could break it down today into action steps. Because, it, okay, so think about this. All right. I want you to imagine this is where you are right now. And let's say, let me make sure I get, I have multiple screens here. So if you see my eyes darting, um, this is where you are and this is where you want to be at the end of, let's say uh, this year, right? So you're here right now, this is your current state and this is your desired reality. And there's a gap, right? There's a gap between where you are right now, and where you want to be. Now I want you to think about this so you can apply it towards the thing that you want to make advances for, meaning that limitless is not about being perfect. Limitless is about advancing. It's about progressing uh, to that better, better version of yourself, to be able to be something more, to do something more, to have something more, to be able to share something more. So this is where you are. This is where you want to go, all right? So what's the key to closing that gap? All right, like actually, let's make this interactive. In the chat, what's the key? What What is the key to getting from here to here? Like if I was to take a piece of paper and let's say this is where you are here and this is where you wanna go here, right? Let's say you wanna go here. What's What's the key to get from here to here? Action, consistency, habits, determination. Wow. See, you've forgotten more about personal growth and achieving your goals than most of your friends and family will ever know, right? You know you know the things, right? I'm going to break everything that you put right here into three areas, and everything falls into these three things, okay? So first, one of the things that you need, right, is you need, you need the methods, right? So you need methods, right? So if your goal here is resolutions, popular resolutions, people want to... Uh, they want to have more energy, right? More energy than they're currently demonstrating. They want to what? They want to make more money. They want to, to what? They want to learn something new, maybe a foreign language or a musical instrument, right? Or they may be a big resolution is people want to read more, right? And I'm going to use reading as an example because most of you come to me because you want to read more. You have books on your shelf that you haven't finished yet. How many of you have books on your shelf you haven't read yet? And it becomes shelf help, not self help, right? Um, all right. So let's say you have a goal here. The gap here, first, you need a you, you need a method, right? You need a, a strategy to get you there, right? And hopefully, it's an updated strategy. If it's from here to here, and you want to grow a business, but hopefully, that method is something like. Uh, product development, maybe their methods of investing, maybe their investments of of their methods on how to raise capital, maybe their methods on how to manage your team, how to hire a a team, how to train your team, maybe their methods for marketing, right? But they have to be current methods, right? They can't be old methods. Now, think about this. What, What is your outcome, your desired state? And then what I want you to think about is is just knowing the methods or the strategies enough for you to be able to get there? No, right? What else do you need? Because a lot of people know what to do. How many of you have set goals, whether it's this year? And for me, January 1st is just like any other day, but like many of you, what else do you need? You also need motivation, right? You need some level of motivation and motivation is drive, right? You need... Because somebody can have the method, but how many people know what to do, but common sense is not common practice, right? You also need motivation to be able to get yourself to act consistently. Now, if you just have motivation, are you going to get here? No, because you could be doing the wrong methods and what? Nothing's going to happen, right? And if you have motivation and methods, is it guaranteed that you're going to get your goal? No. What else do you need? You need the mindset right? And the mindset are the set of assumptions and attitudes you have about that goal. The attitudes, assumptions you have about your business, the attitudes, assumptions you have about money, 
Because if somebody is motivated to make more money and they know the methods, but their mindset is, it's not possible. I'm not capable of it. I don't deserve it, right? Somebody's goal is they want to have a great relationship. Maybe they want to have a fulfilling romantic relationship and they know the methods because they you know, listen to the podcast or read the books and they're motivated to be able to do something, but their mindset is I don't deserve it or I've been hurt before, right? Or this is going to happen, love equals pain, whatever that mindset is. So you need these three. And that's why a lot of goals aren't, they're being set, but they're not being yet or gotten, right? So we're not, so we're, we're not achieving those goals, right? So my thing, a limitless model is based on integrating these three M's. Does that make sense? Now, I'm going to draw this out. You've seen this before, but specifically, I'm going to apply it towards reading more. Because I think with the fastest way you could crush 2023 is to be able to, to read more. The faster you can learn, the faster you can earn. If knowledge is power, learning is definitely your superpower. But the thing is, is a lot of people read a book and they just get the gist of it and nothing happens. But it starts with, you have to get the book. Now, buying a book is easy, right? Some of you are really good at buying books. How many of you are really good at adding to your cart, right? Or going, many of you, Irene, yes. Nadia, yes. Eddie, yes. Everybody is good at buying books, right? But reading is a different skill set because think about it, right? Like your method for your, your mindset must be buying a book is good, right? Or I'm interested in that. That's your mindset. You know, having a book is going to make my life better. You're motivated to buying that book, right? For that reason, you know, there's purpose behind it. And you know the method for buying books, but that's different strategy for reading the book. And it's a different strategy for understanding the book. And there's a different strategy here for actually applying the book also as well. Uh, the reason I focus on books, and I have some of my, you know, some of the books that that I've read. Um, you know, we have Sergey Young's book here. Many of you have read this book, The Science and Technology of Growing Young, right? So this is something we these are podcast episodes. How many of you listen to our our show? Yes, me, me, me. I love it. Uh, Build for Tomorrow by Jason Pfeiffer. And these are, uh, you could take a screenshot of this, certainly. You could post it, tag Jason in it also as well. He's the uh, editor-in-chief at Entrepreneur Magazine. A uh, new podcast coming out, The Good Life. This is the largest study. Uh, this is the largest study done at Harvard University on happiness. And this study is over 80 years old. And so don't you want to know, like, if, if they spent 80 years figuring out who the happiest people are and what they're doing in terms of their, their, their mindset, you know, what's motivating them, the methods they're using, you could be able to download decades into days, right? What an advantage. Uh, another podcast we have coming up is The Distracted Mind with this author here, Adam. Incredible, right? These are how ancient brains in, in a high-tech world. You're going to buy all of them. <laughs> That's not the point. I'm not putting this out to give you more books to be able to read, but I'm going to teach you some strategies on how to read a book a week because that was one of the promises of this session. Another book that's coming out uh, very shortly, Change Your Brain Every Day by our, by our friend, Dr. Daniel Amen, top brain doctor. He's written over 40 books on your brain. Uh, we met a decade ago when he interviewed me for a whole chapter of his book. It was Change Your Brain, Change Your Age. Uh, for those of you who want to add years to your life and also life uh, to your years. Uh, David Goggin's book, absolutely. I was just messaging with him. He has an another one, Never Finish, right? A brand new book. So whatever it happens to be, there's people that have a lot of experience. And one of the best ways to learn something is Genius Leaves Clues is to be able to read their book in a few days. And if you could read one book a week or 52 books a year, that's pretty powerful, right? You have an advantage that nobody else has. And so that's what we're going to focus on today. So we have the three areas. So what I want everyone to do is take out a fresh sheet of paper. And you've seen me do this before, but the application is going to be different. It's going to be about winning because evolution, right, is the natural process of progress, right? And it's gradual. And that's really the goal. And you've seen me post about this. I did a podcast that if you take, if you just improve 1% a day over 365 days, what, what percentage increase is that? So if you take 1% increase a day compounded over 365 days, 
Jason, yeah, Anastasia, absolutely. 37 times. So, and if you want to do the math, you could just take your phone, right? Iron Man fan, yes. <laughs> Batman fan, I have Wolverine, love, love our love our superheroes. If you take 1.01, which is 1%, and you times it by 1.01, right? And you do that, what, 365 times, you get a 3,700% and absolutely increase. 37 times. Now, by the way, if you decrease 1% and you're multiplying 0.99 times 0.99 and you do that 365 times, what happens, right? And so this was a model that was, we had uh, James Clear on our podcast from Atomic Habits, you know, and that's like a framework. It's it's a lens you can look at the world where little things done consistency add up to big things, right? Consistency compounds, little by little, a little becomes a lot. And that's really the goal of evolution, a, a little bit of increase every single day. Um, and so what we're going to do is instead of just breaking things down into habits, I want to also focus on the habits of mind, the habits of our thinking and the habits of our, our motivation. And so we're going to break this down also as well. So let's take out a piece of paper and obviously I could share screen, but I'm doing this with you uh, to make this a little bit more interactive because I want you to be able to do this too. So you're going to draw the three circles of the limitless model. All right. And I'd like my team to do this too. We'll create a worksheet. Make sure you follow us again on social media. We'll post it there, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, wherever we're connected there also as well, primarily on Instagram and draw three circles. And my team will digitize this for you into a worksheet. This, you know, two ears and a face. This is the framework of the limitless model. Okay. And it depends. How do you improve 1%? You measure it. Right. And you can, so that's the great thing about what we teach. <laughs> you can measure your reading speed. You can measure your focus. You can measure your reading comprehension. You can measure your um, ability to remember names, right? Before and after, right? So the, it's 1%. If you're counting a shuffle deck of cards, I mean, you see me do some of these things, right? On video or in person, you could measure your speed, right? And so it's very tangible. It's not like just being inspired or being, or just being motivated. So you have three circles. And what's in the first circle here that I'm pointing to? Just tell me, you know this, because you're going to teach it to me. Put it in the chat, please. Zaya, yeah. Brandon, Tom, mindset. So this is your mindset. Does everyone write mindset in that circle? All right. This is going to be a quick review, but I'm going to show you, I'm going to expand this, right? Something you haven't seen before. This is how I turn it into worksheets for all my goals. If you want to create a personal evolution, this is how to be able to do that. Wow, 2.4, uh, 2,400 of you on here alone. Amazing. So somebody, this is the mindset. And how I'm defining mindset are your set of assumptions and attitudes you have about something. Remember, remember we're going back to this, if you, if you think more linearly, right? We have to deal with the mindset first. Three things that I would say fall in this category, what I believe is possible, what I believe I'm capable of, and what I believe I deserve. Now, by the way, when you're thinking about this, sometimes it helps you to learn it by jumping perceptual positions. Like imagine, think about your kids. Think about your a client that you want that you want them to be more limitless, and that's keeping them stuck, right? From a buying or from investing or from uh, if you're coaching them on doing the exercise that you want them to do or the diet you want them on, they have a certain mindset that keeps them stuck, right? Because the thing is, if you're watching this, there's some area of your life that you're not progressing in. Otherwise, you wouldn't tune into 2023 Limitless, right? You wouldn't turn into your New Year's evolution if you weren't interested. So in some area of your life, there's a box, right? And a box means you're stuck. You're stuck in that box. It's not just a ceiling. There are walls. <laughs> there's a floor. You're stuck in that box. This box is three-dimensional. And the three forces that keep you in that box are these three forces, right? And only three forces. Every single thing that you listed in the chat, right? I could fit into one of these three boxes, one of these three circles, right? Whether it's energy, whether it's having a reason, or whether it's time management, everything falls into one of these three areas. And I'll show you. So this is how I coach clients, but this is how we work with our team. This is how we work with our students, you know, from every country in the world, you know, who enrolls in our speed reading memory academy, right? So this is your mindset. From there, you could have 
a limitless mindset and you're redrawing the borders and boundaries of what you believe you deserve, what you're capable of, what you think is possible, but you can still not have that end goal, right? This end goal. So what do you do? You have to look into your motivation. So the second thought, the second circle is your motivation. So everyone just put a little motivation. We are going for a full hour, motivation. And I'm sharing with you the framework for being, doing, having, and sharing whatever you want. And by the way, these are things you can control. You can't control things outside of these three circles. You can't control the economy. You can't control politics. You can't control what's going on in the environment, but you can control the controllables, right? Control the controllables, all right? And just you have agency. And so there's a quote in Limitless that says, life is the C between B and D. Now, you know this. What is it? What does B stand for? Put, put it in the chat. Birth. What does D stand for? Death. C, choice. Right? So I always talk about the power of choice because wherever we are at this current state of our health, of our relationships, of our finances, of our learning, our reading speed, our memory abilities, right? That's the sum total of all the choices we've made up to this point. What are we going to eat? How are we going to spend time? Um, you know, what are we feeding our minds, right? Who are we spending time with? All those things. So that's our current state. So you control the controllables. Motivation, the formula, really simple. If somebody knows it, put it in the chat. What we talk about in our podcast and our courses in, in Limitless, the formula is from Limitless Motivation, it's P times E times S3. Bravo, perfect. Sophia, perfect. P times E times S3. P times E times S3. So just remember that, okay? You don't have motivation. You do it. A big part of what we teach is taking nouns and turning them into verbs, right? Because we, we, it's about transcending this year. You want to transcend. You want to end the trance. This hypnosis, wherever we got it from, marketing, media, our parents, wherever, that that we're limited, that we're broken, that we're not enough. Because if you struggle with self-doubt or self-sabotage, self, that's the mind, right? That's your mindset. So that's why we have unlimited. So that's what I'm going to talk about a little bit today. But if you struggle with procrastination, that's a motivation issue. If you struggle with drive, that's a motivation issue. The key to motivation, and you don't say, I, I don't have motivation, you do it. Right? It is a process. It's not something you have to pump yourself up for either when you know the formula. P stands for what? Put it in the chat. Try and this. Purpose. Right? So first you need purpose. Right? You need a reason. Write this down. Reasons reap results. Reasons reap rewards. Right? Without a purpose, you won't be motivated. You need a reason to remember someone's name. You need a reason to read 52 books a year. You need a reason to whatever. And it can't be cognitive. It has to be what? It has to be emotional. You need to be able to feel it. Otherwise, we are not logical. We're, not, we're just not. If we were logical, we'd be doing the things that, we're, that we know we should be doing. right? So you need to be able to feel it because we're biological. We're not logical. We're biological. Dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins. We are this feeling, chemical, emotional soup, right? Same thing with people that you want to influence. You want to educate, right? They could have an infinite mindset that they could learn this, or let's say you're a life coach or a health coach, or have this body that they desire and deserve, or your financial coach have this amount of wealth. Their mindset might love, but they're not motivated. But they need a purpose to do those things that you're recommending them to do. If your kids aren't cleaning their room, it's a mindset, motivation, and a method, right? And so the E in P times E times S3, what does E stand for? And you know it, energy. And this is what I, this is called, um, when you're going through it, this retrieval is an active way of quizzing yourself, is a way of learning even more, right? Act, they call it active retrieval. When you test yourself or somebody tests you, it, you're, it, it's better than learning something twice or reading something twice. It's better to be able to re read something and then have somebody quiz you than it is to be able to read something twice, right? Because it pulls out information to see what you really have inside as opposed to what you recognize, 
right? A lot of people are recognizing people's names or faces. They're not remembering their face. Does that make sense? Or if they're reading it, they recognize, but it's still outside of them. I want to make sure you could retrieve it out, meaning it's inside. So when I ask these questions, that's to our, whether you've been with me a day or a decade, that's me doing a rapid review, right? The E is energy because somebody could have a, let's say going back to 52 books a year. By the way, how many of you would love to download in your mind, not just on your app, but download inside your brain 52 books a year? Like how, how what books would you get? right? That's the closest thing right now to like, I know Kung Fu, if you get that reference, right? So you can have a limitless mindset that I could read three times faster. I could read a book a week, right? I deserve it, the success that will come from it. But if you don't have a purpose to do it, you won't get do it. And if you don't have the energy to read, if you haven't gotten good sleep, if you ate a big processed meal and you're in a food coma, you're not going to want to read. Does that make sense? All right. And that's S3. Finally, S3 is what? Small, simple steps, right? This is uh, as uh, BJ Fogg, who we had on our podcast. I would listen to our podcast from the first one and would just go on. It's like it's like an online academy. It's free, no sponsors, right? You don't get ads. You don't have to fast forward 10 minutes in or anything else like that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, but we just want to get it out to the world. And every podcast is what, 10, 15, 20 minutes max? So you could binge listen to three, four episodes and make it really simple for you. And my, my goal is to, to distill out of these books enough usable content from other people and in interviews to be able to, for you to change your mindset, your motivation, and, and the methods you're using. S3, small, simple steps. Because what keeps people from not being motivated often is what? They're overloaded. They're overwhelmed. They're confused. Right. And sometimes if you have this big goal, whatever, whatever this goal happens to be, right, whatever is here, this is your, this is your current state, your desired reality, right? You have methods, you have what motivation and your mindset, this thing here could be too overwhelming. It could be too big. Like maybe you want to lose this like 30 pounds, right? Or you want to have, get a hundred thousand followers on social media, right? Or make put certain money or read three times faster or have the ability to memorize speeches in foreign languages in rapid time, right? That might be too big. So S3 are small, simple steps. And the way you get the small, simple steps, ask yourself a question. What is the tiniest action I could take right now that will give me progress towards this goal? What is the tiniest action I could take right now that will give me progress towards that goal? So tiny that you can't fail. Right. And that's the key to have more and more motivation because think about it. Think about any area of your life. Just think about the thing you want to achieve this year. Right. If you had purpose, the P, like a real reason, like it was really important to you and you felt that reason and you had enough energy, you had enough fuel for your car and you knew the small steps you have to take in order to get there, what could stop you? It's hard to stop somebody who knows where and why they're going there. Right. So you go from your head to your heart. And then finally, the last circle is what? The last M are your methods, right? Are your methods. It goes from your head to your heart to your hands, right? And this is why it's integrated. And this is why it's a line because no part of yourself is fighting with another part of yourself, right? You could be motivated and know the methods, but if you're not on the right mindset, then you're fighting with that. And then it's a struggle and you self-sabotage right? Um, you take one step forward, one step back. Uh, you self-doubt, you have doubt for yourself. Motivation is absolutely clear, right? Purpose, energy, small, simple steps. And then finally, you need the methods, right? And you know, we're not, we don't have time to go through the whole thing here in terms of methodology, but that's when we offer our programs. And so many of you, how many of you are part of our programs right now have gone through quick reading, quick recall? Yes, yes, yes. Quick student, quick thinking, Quick confidence, right? Quick productivity, our new course on productivity. Welcome. And thank you. Well, I can't even keep up with, with, and I'm really fast. Thank you for going through our programs. But the reason why they are successful in terms of people completing them is because we deal with all three of these areas, right? We're not just teaching methodology. In fact, the book Limitless, it used to be a book when I was about to submit it all on methods on how to learn languages and how to focus and concentrate on how to be able to change your habits. What are the best uh, neuro nutrition, brain foods, optimizing your sleep, you know, speed reading, all that. But I realized that people won't do it unless they had these two things were addressed, right? Because we're only dealing with this and we're not dealing with the things, which is really 
knowing is, is half the battle, but believing and, and being driven is the other half, is the other halves or 150% if you're doing the math, a third, a third, a third, all right? Now, how we turn this into a worksheet? Before I do that, notice that there's some overlap here. So really quickly, there's some overlap here where mindset, you see this part right here in between a mindset and motivation right here? Where you have the limitless mindset and you have limitless motivation, this is inspiration. So I want you to just put inspiration right here. This is inspiration. What is something, what does an inspiring speaker do? What is inspiring? I don't know. What's your favorite inspiring? Who's your favorite inspiring speaker? Put in the chat. Who's your favorite? What's your favorite inspiring movie? No, no. You said, thank you. Very, very kind. Um, Brene Brown, Simon Sinek, Tony Robbins, uh, Steve Harvey, John Maxwell, right? They inspire you because they change your mindset, your beliefs, right? Your assumptions about something. And they give you some motivation. But you also need methods, right? But you don't, but you're inspired, but you don't have the instructions. Does that make sense? All right. Where motivation reaches, well, let's do this, where mind reaches methods, the overlap of mindset and methods is what? Wow. We have a lot of great names here. A lot of dear friends where you have mindset and motivation, stick with me, mindset and motivation. You have, you have another one, ideation. So this area here is ideation, three I's inspiration, ideation. Ideation is you have the mindset, believe it's possible, believe you're capable of it, and you know the methods, but it stays inside your head. It stays an idea, that's ideation. The third I is where motivation and methods hit. Motivation and method. If someone's motivated and they know what to do, the methods, what are they doing? What's the third M, third, third I? Third I. <laughs> Implementation. You got it. Yep, absolutely implementation. You're going to act on it. If you're motivated and you have a clear path or process, right? Three Ps. This is what? P is what's possible. Your mindset is what's possible. Your motivation is your purpose. And the method is the process, right? So if you have motivation and you have methods, then you have implementation. But you're only going to be able to implement what you believe is possible, what your mindset allows. So you could still be stuck in that box. Make sense? Say yes or yes. This is the yes. This, and I do this because I know the answer, but I want you to be active because this makes you, this, this increases the neuroplasticity, right? This helps you make connections because you're not just hearing it, you're seeing it and you're doing it, all right? Now, what haven't we addressed here is that circle here, right there in the middle where the three M's or the three I's hit and they converge right here is a fourth I, and that fourth eye is what? Integration. That's your identity. That's the limitless state. So how, how do I use this? All right. Now that you have this in place, this is your integration. It's just who you are because your mind, your motivate, your mindset, your motivation, your methods are all aligned. Your head, your heart, your hands are all aligned, right? The pos your possibilities, your purpose, and your processes are all aligned. And then you become limitless, right? Then you are evolving. This is how you create momentum because this momentum is just going on and on and on because there's no friction, right? If you, if you don't believe something is possible, then all of a sudden you're putting on the brakes. If you're not fueling, this is all motivation, it's all fuel. Purpose gives you fuel. Sleep gives you fuel, right? Small, simple steps like clarity gives you fuel, right? And so that will be a break, right? That'll be less fuel. So this put, my mindset will put you on the brakes. Your, your motivation will sap your fuel, right? Or your gas. And then the methods might are the techniques. So if you're driving a car and you want to go from here to here, wherever you want to take on your just great journey this year together, your, your, your methods is how you drive, right? Your competency for be able to, to drive that incredible vehicle. And I love how you're supporting each other. Somebody asks a question, what is the second one? And everyone's very quick to respond. But that's what we have in our community, right? In our app, we have people from 195 nations just sharing their best practices, applying this stuff to things I never even thought of applying. You know, they start book clubs, right? And then what they're reading and they're doing theirs in different languages and they're creating accountability groups and challenging each other. That, that's the goal here. How do we become limitless in a limited world? We, we do it together, right? So how do you, how do you use this model here? Well, and well, this is what will turn into a worksheet. Let's think about this. This integrative state is going to be your, your goal, 
right? And so let's say your goal here, you write it up on top, is you want, and obviously I'm I'm writing like this, so it's kind of how to uh, maintain good handwriting. That's why I make sure you follow us on social media. Make sure you sign up for our newsletter so that way you get a copy of this. Like we'll put together a worksheet. This here, let's say is your goal for 2020, you know, this year, right? This is um, one book a week. So let's say you put here, I want to read one book a week. And I'm using this just as content to drive it. That's your goal. Now I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> If that's your goal is to read one book a week, what do you think the mindset is of somebody who could read one book a week? Like, give me some of the beliefs or thoughts, right? Your brain is this incredible supercomputer and your self-talk is a program it will run. So if you tell yourself, I'm not good at reading, right? I'm not good at remembering what I read. Growth mindset. Yes, I can. I enjoy reading. I can read a book a week. I can do it. I will make time. I'm capable of reading this. Oh, look at this. Amazing. 45 minutes. A day. Some of you know my content very, very well. How many of you would be interested in being like a certified like brain coach? Because so many of you know so much about this. And if you're already coaching people as a personal trainer, as a wealth management coach, as a manager, or as a leader, um, as a writer, as a life coach and anything like this, I would love to share this and, and put this in your toolbox. Um, we're doing a whole program on quick coaching on like my process for coaching with clients um, that, that, that I get to work with. Um, all right. So let's, let's say, let's say this is how I do it on a worksheet with a, with a client. And it'd be it's a lot more legible. <laughs> so what, what, what you want to do is look at your first thing when you're coaching somebody and you're your best coach, you're a better coach for yourself than I am with you. Right. Because you know, you better, if you're willing to be honest and you're willing to roll up your sleeves right? Then brutally honest, then you're a better coach for yourself than anybody else on the outside, right? So this is not even like a new year, new you, because I, I really don't like that. This is like, this is like not a new year, new you. It's just, I just want more of you, right? Remember just who you are, right? Without all of the, the BS and everything else we hear from, from everything else, the opinions, other people's expectations, you know, your internal fears, who you are at your core, so what I do when I'm coaching somebody is I'm, I say these questions. I was like, okay, the mindset of somebody who doesn't read 52 books a year or read one book. If I, if I say you could read one book a week, what mindset, and honestly, some of you might be dealing with this right now. If you're honest and true, what beliefs come up? And I would write them down because you're never going to be able to, you're never going to do the methods if your belief here says I'm not smart enough. I'm not capable. I'm a horrible reader, right? I'm so stupid, whatever that is, right? So what I do in my worksheets, and we'll, we'll send this worksheet again, just make sure you follow us on social media, is I'll write the limiting belief and I call it a lie, L-I-E, a limited idea entertained. Um, I had bad parents, so I'm not going to be, I'm not a good parent, right? Uh, I was labeled... I was put in special class back in school. I was slow in school. Whatever that limited belief is, doesn't mean it's true. It's a limited idea you're entertaining. Can we at least can we at least acknowledge that? Right. The reason why you meditate is not to control your thoughts. The reason why you meditate is so you realize that your thoughts don't have to control you. That these thoughts, like when the teacher said or adults in my life said, "That's the boy with the broken brain." I got that's my that's the lie that I believed you know, for a decade and a half. And I was never, all behavior is belief driven. So I was never able to do the method because my belief kept me, kept me stranded here, right? Helplessness is learned, right? But so is being limitless is learned also, right? And you just need a representation. You need a coach or mentor. So what I do when I'm doing this worksheet is I break it down into three areas. If you can imagine these three, like, like I, this is a third, this is a third here, this is third. So what I'm looking to do is underneath mindset, I just write the limited idea that's holding me back. And then I write down the truth, right? And usually it's the exact opposite, right? And maybe if you're not sure, you write the lie, like I'm not a good reader. And then you, underneath it, you transform it into something like, I'm not a great reader yet. And you just add a simple word like yet. And it just opens up the possibility. I think yet is a powerful way because remember your your brain if i tell you 
don't think of a purple giraffe for all the money you could hold in, you know, in, in your arms. Don't think of a big purple giraffe. You're going to think about it, right? So the mind is, is a command center, right? And you want to be able to control your mind. You want to be able to upgrade. Some of you saw this little plug, right? An entrepreneur, as I mentioned, Entrepreneur Magazine, upgrade your brain. This is upgrading your mind and your mindset. So you write the lie. I'm a slow reader, right? I'm not that smart. I'm too old, whatever it is. And then you put the opposite, right? And you're tracking it because the first, the first step to change is just awareness. You need to be aware that needs to be fixed, right? Or be able to be able to transcend motivation, right? So what I do is have one line purpose, one line energy, one line, small, simple steps. And here's the key. So let's say it's, I'm going to go back to our joint goal of reading 52. I would love to take whatever amount of how many people are here right now. And I would love to create an army of you because I really want to shift the world. You change your brain, you change your life. You change your brain, you change the world. I would, I think we make a huge shift in our own lives and the lives of many other people to be able to do something simple. And you know what it is? Reading a book a week is kind of like a gateway habit. It's so simple to do. But you do that, and then you're like, what else can I do, right? It kind of shakes up this belief, like, well, I never thought, what else can I do because it changes your, your mindset? Well, maybe I really can do this in my relationship. Maybe I really can do this in my business. Maybe I really could do X, right? Because it expands what's possible. Because your life is difficult. It's hard, and sometimes it has to be hard for one or two reasons. Either you're leaving your comfort zone, or life is hard because you're staying in your comfort zone, right? And the comfort zone's nice, but not much grows there, right? So here we're practicing and playing at the edge of what we perceive is our, our limits. And we're redrawing literally the borders and boundaries of what's possible. So on this sheet of paper, I write the P, purpose, and I put a line. And so what is the reason or the purpose, the drive that will get you to read? What do you think if you were to role model genius, right? And you're thinking about somebody who can read 52 books in a year. What do you think their mindset is? What do you think their purpose is? What do you think, what would, what would, how would your life be and feel different if you could read 52 books in a year? And if that's too much, what if it could be just four books a week, a, a month, a book on your favorite book on anti-aging, your favorite book on negotiation, a book that's been sitting on your shelf on sales, on a startup business, on network marketing, right? On, on anything. So yeah. And so you put your purpose and just allow yourself not to have it here, but imagine as you breathe, it comes here and, and how, if you could wake up tomorrow and have that ability, how awesome would life be? If you could learn another language in a, in a, in a 20% of the time, right? A fraction of the time. If you can remember people saying, what, how would that make you feel, right? That's the purpose. And then go to energy. What's one thing you could do? And again, we're going to make this into a worksheet that's going to be much more pretty than this. The E, you put the E here. P is here. E is here on the next line. What's one thing you could do to enhance your energy? You know, over the next over the next few weeks, is it prioritizing your sleep? And how many podcasts do we have on sleep? How many podcasts do we have on the best brain foods? How many podcasts do we have on building your positive peer group? How many podcasts and episodes how do we have on reducing your stress, which could sap your energy. So what's one thing that you could do to be able to enhance? Because again, remember transcending that one way is you could transcend and end the trance is taking nouns and turning the verbs. If you don't have motivation. You also don't have energy. You generate energy and you do energy, do things that create energy. And so that mitochondria that, that you have in your, in, your, in your body, how can you enhance it? You know, what supplements do you need to take? You know, what do you need to drink? What do you need to eat? How do you need to breathe to have more energy? And just write it down. Exercise creates energy. Breathing creates energy. Nutrition, all of these, deep breathing, absolutely. And then finally, what is like the S3? Make a line with S3. Killing ants, yes. And some people who have no idea what that stands for, can somebody please uh, list what ants stands for so they don't think this is like <laughs> something, something kind of weird? And then finally, what? Uh, reading one book a week. So how do you read one? I mean, like, let's say one small, simple step. So maybe 
taking the book out and putting it by your nightstand is just one small, simple step, right? So a small, simple step is not like working out an hour a day. If you haven't done it, maybe that's too big. Maybe it's putting on your running shoes. If your kids aren't flossing their teeth, get them to floss one tooth. Yeah, to read a, a book, let's say a book a week, one small, simple step is opening up the book, right? Maybe things that I recommend, uh, keeping an active book list. You know, I have an active book list that I constantly, just like I have a vision board, you know, I put the things that I want to be, do, have, and share with the world. And, and you know, photos with, with all of you that I've met at events and all the things I want to be able to impact. I have vision board. But once I also achieve those things, I take those things off a of vision board. I put them onto a gratitude board, right? And so same thing with my books, right? I have a to learn list, right? There's some things I want to learn this, this year. Uh, I also have a to read list. And these are all the books. And then when I'm done with reading these books, like some of the ones I showed you that I read just recently, then I'll put them onto uh, another list, right? Where I kind of integrate it. And that's my implementation list of how I'm going to use this stuff. And I mark up the book in different ways. Some of you have gone through our reading program, know different ways of doing this also as well. Um, so gratitude is important because it creates a feeling in your body like you already have it, right? You're not coming, you're not separate from that goal. Because right? your nervous system doesn't know the difference between something you vividly imagine and something that's real. And so you want to be able to control. Remember, you want to be the pilot of your mind. You don't want to be the passenger. You want to be the pilot. And it's not a about time management. It's it's about mind management. Everything first starts here in your mind. And so going back to S3, small, simple steps that you can make, maybe you're going to write, hey, I'm going to start a book list. You know, Maybe I'm going to test my reading speed, right? I'm going to read for 60 seconds, count the number of lines, count the number of words. I just, and that gives me a starting point. Maybe it's, uh, you know, I'm going to schedule my reading. Like, you know this because even reading one book a week, and I did a whole podcast, if you search Jim Quick, How to Read a Book a Week Without Speed Reading, right? Obviously, if you could speed read, that's a lot easier to read a book a week um, or a book a day, whatever. We have many people read a book a day. The average book has about, let's say, 64,000 words. You know, according to Amazon, like, that's like kind of like the, the mid-range. Uh, so the average person reads about 200 words per minute. That means it takes 320 minutes to get through a book. If you divide 320 minutes that it takes to get through a book by seven days in a week, it's 45 minutes a day, 45 minutes a day. That's so much more doable. Maybe 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the afternoon, 25 minutes in the afternoon. And, and that's it. And that's all it takes. Now, 45 minutes a day is a lot, certainly, because the one thing that's equal is time. Let's just be real. We have thousands of people on here. We don't all have the same education, not all the same network, not all the same income, not all the same, you name it, right? Everyone has a different situation, but everybody has 24 hours in a day, right? So you have 86,400 seconds and how are we investing that, you know, back into what we're doing? And so power purpose. Wow. Yeah. We really should start a, like a quick coaching program. So many of you know so much. That would be fun to work with the high achievers in, in, in this group. Oh, I would love to teach like how I teach. I've never done that before ever. Um, S3. So like, so it's 45 minutes a day. Now, if you could triple your reading speed, how many of you read faster after going through our reading program, just in the chat, read faster, have better focus, more confidence, understand more what you read. I was, I was screenshotting this so I could just say hi to all of you, Francesca, Richard, Blue Lotus, Lester. Amazing. So, so because last time we took a reading class, how old were we? six or seven. So most of us are still reading the same way we learned when we were like a child. And so the difficulty and demand has increased a lot, but how we read it is exactly the same. And that that is the challenge, right? You have to upgrade. So the goal here with life is, so with here, going back to this mindset, all I'm doing is writing down the lies, the limited idea entertains. This is the BS, belief systems, right? Because all behavior is belief driven. You can't remember names if you believe that you're not smart enough. Or, that, or if the purpose, that they're not important to you, right? You don't have a reason to remember that person's name, you know, or you don't have the energy, for example, or you're using poor methods. Like, do you do this when you forget someone's name? Does it start with an A? Does it start with a B? Does it start with a C? You get really nervous when you get to like W because there's not many letters after that. Um, so finally, after that mindset motivation, the methods is how you can upgrade the skills, the the superpower human beings have is you are the ultimate adaptation machine. With challenge comes change, right? And so what method, what new method are you going to have 
for investing, right? And that's why you read. That's why I'm starting with reading because that's one of the fastest way to increase your knowledge, skills, and abilities, right? Knowledge, skills, and abilities. So what method do you, are you, are you employing, you know, from these books that you're reading maybe to be able to get that kind of goal? All right. Does that make sense? All right. Um, there are a lot of people asking about quick reading. Our team, yes, reading is the same as Audible. I'll tell you the difference. Um, okay, so maybe our team could put in the chat, we put together, if you go to, if you haven't joined our reading memory, confidence program, productivity program, I mean, we have the largest suite of accelerated learning programs in the world. Um, big guarantee on, on all of that, money back guarantee. The team for the new years put together jimquick.com 2023. Just go there, jimquick.com. 2000 forward slash 2023. If somebody could put that in there, love quick reading course. Thank you. Kim changed my life. Thank you very much. Um, so jimquick.com forward slash 2023. And we have a package bundle of our, of our flagship programs. I think there's six of them, six flagship programs. There are five or six flagship programs because you're doing a quantity, you get them at a discount and just try it. Try the reading, the memory, the focus program, whatever the thinking program, student program. And if you haven't, if you don't get stellar results, just shoot us an email and get a money back guarantee. All right. And the reason why though it works, I'll tell you, because I go, I've gone through a lot of programs that I feel like didn't work because they don't address all of the three areas. If you take nothing from this little master class together on your personal evolution. Most people this year, because of what's going on in the environment and because of what the world has gone through the past few years, they're scared. And because when you're scared, you go into your survival brain and your survival brain holds you hostage away from your creative brain, your executive functioning, right? Your, even some of the imagination is being used. You have the imagination, but some you are imagining things that you don't want. And the mind doesn't know the difference between something you vividly imagine and something that's real. And I'm saying, let, let's do an audit of our resources. Like the whole reason, like I wear a brain on my shirt and I'm pointing at my brain in pictures and like that is you need to, I want you to know your brain, right? I want you to trust your brain, right? I want you to train your brain. And, and mostly I want you to love and use your brain. It, it is the master key for, for everything. I, I wouldn't have dedicated three decades of my life if I thought otherwise, right? And the reason why is because I struggled with my focus. I struggled with remembering. I struggled with my thinking. I had struggled with brain fog. I struggled with you know, traumatic brain injuries, everything like that. And I just know when I unlocked this, every area of my life got better, right? And it's not because I'm so great. It's because you're born with that greatness inside, right? And that's the goal. Like, I just want to offer true help and hope to those who are told that they were limited, like, like I was when I was a child. Right. And because my grandmother passed of Alzheimer's and because of other situations, I started prioritizing this and my passion my, became my purpose. Right. My mess in life became more my message. And I feel like we all have that. So no matter how your superpower, it, it shows up in the world, because I believe you have a trait, you have a strength, right? You have some kind of ability other people don't have. Your brain only enhances that. Because if you're only using 10% of its potential, we use all of our brain, let's be clear. Right. But if you're only using, you're not as efficiently, just like your body. Some people are just so fit and energized that they could do certain things using the same 100% of our body that, that we all do, right? But you could do that with your mind. So out of fear and constraint, the human brain naturally wants to grow. But when, as soon as it experiences pain, it starts to shut down, right? For those of you who study like are more trauma-informed, it starts to shut down its nervous system because newness is, is could be danger. You know, it could be, it could, it's something that could be threatening to us. And what, what I'm saying is we, we have to kind of pull back the curtain here and see that there's some, there are methods behind what looks like magic, that things don't happen for no other reason. And that genius leaves clues that you shouldn't be downgrading your dreams this year to meet this current situation. You should be upgrading your mindset, upgrading your motivation, upgrading the methodology that you're using to be able to meet those bold, audacious goals, you know? If you, again, yes, I, I appreciate this, um, like all the feedback, but just, just, just rewatch this. I don't know if our team is going to make this available again, but I hope it could serve as a reminder to you because it's not new year, new you. This, this is like new year. This is your real you, right? This is the part that's been subverted, suppressed by other people's opinions, by their expectations, you know, by external environment that said we weren't enough. 
right? And I'm here to say Limitless wasn't chosen. Like I could have called this meta learning. I could have called this book anything, but I realized, and the exceptional part was because as a kid, I was with a group of kids and they said, great news. We have a group for, for all of you. It's for, for the, all the exceptional kids. And I was like the only one not invited to be part of that group. And, but I realized that it's not how smart you are. It's not how smart your team is, not how smart your family is, not how smart your partner is, your kids are. It's not how smart you are. It's how are you smart? And we're born with this incredible genius. And I'm telling you, like we do life a disservice if we hide that magic. And so I encourage you, if you're looking for a small, simple step to try joining our programs, uh, go to jimquick.com forward slash 2023. And maybe it's not affordable. You know, it's definitely an investment. It comes out to less than $2 a day for the year. But I would say that, you know, that quote that they have from, um, I don't know if you saw that, that Matt Damon movie, Bought a Zoo. And he talks about like 20 seconds of insane courage and belief in yourself, you know, changes everything. You know, I feel like that nothing changes going back to one small step in another direction completely changes your destination, you know, or your, or your destiny in life. And so what's one small step that you can make right now that will help you live the life that you desire and that you truly deserve, right? And so that's it. Um, we're at the top top of the hour. Um, some of you asking about what's the key to making a better year, five C's. You need to challenge yourself flat out. With challenge comes change. You need consistency. That's the theme we talked about. Little by little, little becomes a lot. You need accountability, which I'm gonna count as a C <laughs> as I tend to alliterate. Accountability, accountability. You need that's why our programs work, right? We challenge you. We make you consistent every day for 21, 30 days, right? Um, accountability, because you're checking in every single day with our team. Um, capabilities, the fourth C to level up your life, challenge, consistency, accountability, capabilities. You need new sc a skill or ability. And I think the number one, learning how to learn. The faster you can learn, the faster you can earn. Because knowledge today is not only power, knowledge is profit. And then finally, you need coaching and a community. That's the fastest way to get anywhere. And so if you want to evolve this year, challenge yourself, be consistent, have accountability, and upgrade your capabilities, have a coach, and have a community of people because who you spend time with is who you become. Now, if you don't want to create that from scratch, go to jimquick.com forward slash 2023, and we'll do that with you. Not for you. I want to be very clear. There's no magic pill, but there is a process that there's a version of yourself that's patiently waiting. And the goal is we show up every single day until we're introduced. If you got value out of this, please share it on social media. Um, if you want a copy of this worksheet that's nicely designed, uh, we'll send it out sometime over the next week or so. Make sure you follow us on social media. Thank you for all the amazing reviews for our book, for our podcast. Continue to subscribe. And I just want to say a shout out to, to my team. You know, we're, we're a few dozen people around the world you know, what we have in common, you know, we're small people, we're really big on purpose. You know, most of us, you know, went through similar challenges that I did and some even more and some extremes. And so I want to thank the team because I, I do the easy part, honestly, you know, and it really does take a village. So thank you to my team. Thank you all for tuning in. I wish this year be full of lots of life, lots of laughter, lots of love, always. It's a learning. Take care, everyone. Love you.